strength and resistance takes a long time when you're low carb. Hey there, NJRoot22.com here with another low carb keto carnivore chat. And today we're going to talk about the relationship between bad food and your low carb goals. Specifically, it's the fact that it takes a while to build up a resistance to the carbs and the foods that you used to love. It really took a long time to really, really just kick it all to the curb. Even when we were doing well at the various stretches over the last decade, we still tasted foods. You know, we never really got to the point where we were eating slices of pizza or taking big bites of sandwiches. I mean, I had one bad moment maybe about seven years ago where I actually ate a, a half a, an Italian uh, sub and man, that really was one of the first notches in my belt for never doing that again because bread, white bread, really just threw me for a loop. So that was like, like you have to take uh, little notches over time to build up your resistance. But uh, then I, I, would, I wouldn't have a problem over the years taking a bite of a chicken nugget if it had a little wheat on it or sometimes I'd have a meatball that came from the pizza parlor. Even though it's low carb, they still put bread inside those things and then crappy low grade ingredients. Especially in those tomato sauces that you get from the restaurants, there's usually a whole lot of sugar in them. Go to your supermarket and look at the various uh, marinara sauces they have on the shelves and you're going to see that a lot of them have you know, spoonfuls of sugar in it per serving. And if you multiply, because a lot of times their serving sizes are not quite accurate, you know, four ounces, two ounces, whatever it may be. And then if you find out how much sugar is in that entire jar, you realize that's just a jar of sugar. It took a lot of years though. Now we've gotten to the point now where we're almost 99% perfect when it comes to resisting the foods that uh, are around this house. And I prepare a lot of them. That includes like pastas and breads and sandwiches and toast and, and all sorts of stuff. I make pizza for my family all the time. And there's, there's a lot of good food sitting here like tempting me to taste it. And I've been doing really good because uh, my, my family eats uh, from the pizza place all the time. And I see lots of things here, you know, like delicious chicken franchise. It doesn't look so bad, but it's coated in flour. And I don't want to eat that stuff. And God knows what they put in their sauces. You know, I had to feel the pain. And now, even though I feel like I'm missing out, that FOMO feeling by not tasting that delicious food that I used to know, I'm actually uh, taking pleasure in not feeling the pain that comes along with it. I just don't trust, trust these people, and especially with the MSG post I did earlier this week. These additives that you have no idea. If you're not in the kitchen doing it yourself, you never know what you're getting in these things. And God, you know, they need to, to have customers to stay in business, and I wouldn't be surprised if they add, added things in them to make them taste good so that you remember them as food that was yummy. But can you resist the forbidden foods or do you make excuses such as birthdays and other special occasions to have a bite of cake or that little sinful thing just because? I don't think it's worth it anymore. I don't get the, the pleasure doesn't equal what happens afterward. And I'd much rather be uh, the stay, hold the line and uh, stay the course. So that's it. If you like this video, please hit the bell and subscribe and I'll see you next time.